going to be doing something very different today, and I hope that you'll all bear with me because I have. Hello, because I have um, not done anything like this before, so it's kind of new. Um, it's a crafting, Fimo crafting session that I'm going to be doing live. So I am going to be crafting something. I know what I'm going to be crafting. <laughs> I'm going to be crafting an owl necklace out of Fimo, or what some of you might know as polymer clay. I haven't ever tried to create something on a live stream before, but I can't see how this could possibly go wrong. I'm absolutely almost 98, 87, 70% certain that this won't end in tears. Um, this is something that I've made before, so I feel reasonably confident. And whilst I am making the Fimo necklace, you guys can ask me questions and I will attempt to answer them. I'm just gonna take my bracelet off because it's very jangly, I've just realized, which might be annoying, as that's Mr. Purple. Um, so yes. If you guys have any questions, do feel free to ask me while I'm uh, crafting. I also have uh, something else to tell you about. I won't be doing my usual TV book isolation creations, but I have got something I want to tell you about. And also just generally chat really. So to start with, I am making a Fimo owl necklace. And I need you guys to help me decide what colour the necklace should be. So. First of all, let me show you my Fimo box because it is a very exciting box full of joy. Got my clippers, got my wire clippers. This is my Fimo box of joy. Ah, look at all the colours arranged in colour order and those are my tools. It's just a joyous thing. And when I work with, sorry about all the clunking, when I work with Fimo, I always work on a plastic mat because if I do it on the table, it gets stuck to the table and I have to scrape it off. And I've just realised I could actually also do with a sharp knife. So I'm going to ask one of Team Purple, sat over there in the background, to get me a little sharp knife to get started with. So I have got a bunch of different colours. I've got purples, pinks, blues, greens, reds, yellows. So I'm thinking the owl should either be pink and purple, orange and yellow, green or blue green and blue there let's go with that so do you want it to be pink and purple green and blue or orange and yellow cast your votes now and while you're voting on that um and i will go with the majority i am going to say this <laughs> my brain not working um when i finish making this necklace and i've fired it and um, varnished it and everything I'm going to send it out to one of my lovely purple people so I'm going to take all of the purple people's names and stick them into an app I'm sure that such an app exists that I can put all their names in and get it to spit out one name randomly and I will send that per that lucky person I feel like a blue Peter presenter again I'm going to send that lucky person my Fimo necklace so if you want to be in a chance with in <laughs> if you want to be in with a chance of winning my owl necklace then you could join the purple people now and if you join the purple people now it will tell me whilst we're on air so that's just a thing for your consideration so we got a whole bunch we got pink okay. and purple orange and yellow green and blue green and blue blue and purple pink and purple pink and purple pink and purple pink and purple mr purple has decided that the unanimous winner is pink and purple which obviously i'm sure that you all know i would thoroughly approve of so on the pinks front, I've got lots of pinks. Let's see, let's get them all out. Ooh, all the pinks and all the purples. Actually, I haven't got nearly enough purple. It's probably because I use purple the most, so I'm running out. So I think I'm gonna go with the base to be purple. I think this purple for the base, because that's lovely purple, isn't it? Well, let's face it, all purple is lovely. And put that back. Then I think I'll go with this pink. This is a good pink for the, like, oh, you can't see because of the light, for the wings and other details. And maybe this pink for a little bow on the owl's head. So whilst I start, because one of the more satisfying aspects of working with polymer clay is that you have to soften it up first. So that is just stimtastic in my opinion. It's basically just an excuse to do lots of 
fiddling with like like putty anyone that's into putty or slime or anything like that it's kind of like using that which I really love so whilst I'm getting stuck in with that have we got any questions um, no but Liz is saying she had an assessment last week but she's got no results yet but she's already able to unmask and she's going to put me straight and she'll get something this week oh well done Liz I actually remember you saying that you'd got the assessment when you were here in the live stream last week so I'm really glad that you felt that you were able to unmask and show them the real you and the real challenges that you're dealing with I'm sure that'll be really helpful in terms of them doing that assessment is my sound okay because I'm a little bit further away from my camera mic setup than I would normally be can you all hear me okay um, yeah so whilst I'm doing this I'm gonna talk about this week this week has been a bit of a week hasn't it because last Thursday we had the announcement that uh, six up to six people in the UK that is I'm not really entirely sure what's going on in the States so if you want to fill us in and you are in the States feel free but in the UK or the rest of Europe I'm, I'm a bit more up to date with the rest of Europe because we kind of get their um, lockdown updates as part of our regular news so yeah we, the announcement came that we we're allowed to meet up to six people in in our gardens and pri uh, private outdoor spaces as well as um, public outdoor spaces and we were also oh is that a super chat Yay. oh somebody joined the purple people Simon. welcome Simon. Simon welcome to the purple people nice to have you there are already a couple of videos up there just for you to go and check out so yes uh, that's that was one of the announcements and then something about car showrooms being open and outdoor markets being open and obviously some children are going back to school so and then there was like a bunch of controversy 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 that came uh, alongside that when some of the uh, scientific advisors who are responsible for advising the government uh, said that they didn't agree with the lockdown being relaxed at this point and that it was too soon and that we were we're not in the same place as the rest of Europe in terms of being able to lock that to to relax that lockdown because we are still experiencing a reasonably high number of cases so that made my anxious autistic brain I don't know about you guys but that made my brain uh, a little bit fizzy because I found that I kind of went back to the beginning of lockdown where I was anxiously checking the news and social media and trying to figure out what's going on and trying to decide what the best thing for me was and not really trusting the government's decisions because it kind of felt like those decisions were being made not necessarily based on the science um, and so I've had a little bit of an anxious week I've had a couple of meltdowns I've probably not been the easiest person to be around this week I'm not gonna lie uh, because I don't know about you guys but when I get anxious I tend to also become quite irritable and quite touchy and quite sensitive um, because I feel like I've got no skin does that make sense I feel like everything is coming at me and then off the back of that we also obviously had the news uh, from America about what happened in America and the Black Lives Matter protests and it just feels like there's been a lot a very scary and upsetting stuff happening in the world and at the same time the purple family had to make a decision on what the best thing to do for us was in terms of how much we were going to listen to the new lockdown changes uh, particularly given that a couple of us myself and robo boy my my son have got uh, Ila Danlos syndrome and my son also has asthma so we have made the decision that we are not sending him back to school although his school is opening next week we're not sending him back to school we're going to keep him at home and we're going to keep things pretty much as they are for us lockdown wise we are meeting with uh mr purple's mum my mother-in-law and the children's grandma in our garden we did that because we felt that she is you know quite a lot older i don't want to call her elderly because she really wouldn't love that but it felt like an important relationship to maintain but beyond meeting her we're not going to be doing any meeting people outside and we're not sending robo boy back to school and we're not going to go and buy a new car in a car showroom and we're not going to go to outdoor markets we're really just going to stick with where we're at and stay locked down here so i'm just going to pause so i think there's a question uh, with respect to things is autism put thoughts in your head like uh you're you're not very good and those kinds of Yes, Jake, I think what you're talking about, Jake has asked, uh, does having autism cause you to have thoughts in your head like you're not very good or negative self-image stuff, I guess. And I would say that um, what we're talking about here is intrusive thoughts. 
Uh, so it might be worth having a Google of that, Jake, and seeing whether that looks like what we're talking about. Uh, in combination with low self-esteem and self-esteem issues, and I think that um, autistic people, it's kind of a double whammy, really. We are naturally more anxious because the amygdala, the flight or fight part of our brain, is more active. Did someone else join the purple people? Yay! Another new member. Who is it? Let me see. It's Marie. Marie. Uh, pretty much every week. Hey, Marie. Welcome every to the purple people. Morning. Enjoy the content that's already there for you. And fingers crossed for the FEMO. So, it's a combination of the fact that we're naturally wired towards anxiety, which means that we naturally feel quite worried about how we're being perceived and how we're getting on and all that kind of stuff. And then previous life experiences that we have many of us lived with as a result of our autism where we have been told that we're not right or our ways of being are not right or we're too different or we've been judged or we've been bullied or we've struggled. I'm sure many of you can relate to that. And those kind of combine together to sometimes contribute to these kinds of intrusive thoughts which are really upsetting and challenging and I've definitely experienced those things and I think so I think that yes, that probably is because of your autism and because of the life experiences that you might have had because you are autistic. I hope that answers your question, Jake. Have we got any more questions or shall I continue uh, to ramble? We've kind of covered the one from Rose, which is about the relaxation and listening people. Uh, somebody was asking, um, does the does Wrong finger hurt your hands wandering about your EDF? Yes, it does. It does, actually. Um, what I do is I buy Fimo Soft mostly. This is Fimo Soft. You can't see it again. Fimo Soft is softer than regular Fimo and easier to work with because, yeah, well, it's, it, it hurts my hands kind of afterwards because my fingers bend back too far and, yeah, that's all. Mr. Purple was laughing last week because I basically, this did happen. <laughs> I have a finger. <laughs> I was just going to go, I have a finger, sorry. <laughs> my middle finger on my left hand. Um... I was opening a door a couple of weeks ago and it bent back too far and I feel like it dislocated and then kind of popped back in. That's what it felt like. And ever since then, it's been really hurting. And so whenever, but whenever I say to Dave, I think I dislocated my finger, he's like, I'm sure you would know about... Sorry, I said, I said your name, Mr. Purple. Uh, I'm sure it's fine. They won't tell anyone. You won't tell anyone, will you? Anyway, um, yeah, he's been kind of mocking me about that a little bit. <laughs> so I have what I have done here is created a ball of purple Fimo, which I am now going to uh, roll into the base shape of the owl. Da -da, do you like my hand movement? I do, but I don't know whether they're appropriate for Fimo making. What do Fimo crafters do? If I was a proper Fimo video, or I'd have a video from Bob, and you'd just see my hands, but that would be boring, wouldn't it? Not that it's boring when they do it, because I use a lot. I use a lot of FEMO tutorial videos on YouTube. They're really handy. So now I'm going to use my rolling pin, and I'm going to roll it out. Oh, I'm going to squash it a little bit first with my hand. Where do you get your FEMO soft from? Where do I get it from? I get it from Amazon. I'm, I'm ashamed that I use Amazon. It's not ideal that I use Anima Amazon, but um, but there we have it. When you are disabled and at home and you need to buy things, Amazon is quite handy. No way is the, is the volume a little bit low? Yeah. Um, I don't know whether it's better with or without the mic, and the only way to find out would be to take the mic out and continue talking and see which guy you guys prefer. Would you like me to do that? Or shall I just talk louder? <laughs> yeah, no, that, that wouldn't make any difference because the mic is picking up the external sound. So, yes, where was I? So, yeah, we're not making any lockdown changes because we don't really feel ready. And I think what I'm feeling like is that I'm going to, um, hmm, I'm going to wait about three weeks, maybe a month, and see what happens after the loosening of the lockdown. See whether that does cause a second spike, God forbid, I really hope it doesn't, but see whether it does. And then make decisions about what we're gonna do from there. So I guess we're gonna be in lockdown for at least another three weeks at this point. Which, well, we're all in lockdown, but more more of a tight lockdown where basically I'm only going out to walk Coco. Yeah. Uh, Constance is saying that uh, she's been given medication for anxiety, but it makes it worse. Have you ever tried medication for anxiety and does it help? Yes, I have tried medication for anxiety. I have taken uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which are 
uh, also known as antidepressants, and they cause the serotonin in your brain does a cycle ordinarily, and they cause the serotonin to stay at the end of the cycle that gives you the happy feelings, which should reduce anxiety. I've got to say, I've never really particularly loved psychiatric medication. It's never really helped me to feel better, so I'm probably not the best person to talk to about this. However, I know people with autism, autistic people who have found psychiatric medication really helpful and so I think it's really personal and I think I would say that it depends on how long have you been taking it because when I've taken uh, antidepressants SSRIs in the past and I have taken them for a length of time because I've needed them I have uh, found that the first month can be really challenging in terms of increasing my anxiety and also make, making me feel just generally more heightened, like everything is more than it normally is even as an autistic person. And so after the month of, of taking them, my body's gotten used to that and it hasn't felt quite so intense and it has reduced anxiety. So a bit of a mixed answer to that, but that is my answer. So, so did you guys all see Coco's exciting news or should I talk about it some more? I'm just rolling this out. It's quite, it's actually quite challenging, both making FEMO and talking on a live stream. I hadn't really anticipated that. But it is quite, I know what I'm going to do. I've got a plan. Do, 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 do. Why am I singing that song? Where's that song come from? So, Coco, for those of you that didn't know, or if you did and you just want to hear it from the horse's mouth, is now officially an autism assistance dog in training. So on Monday, I took her along to meet the lady that's going to be training her to be fully qualified as an assistance dog to see whether she was going to be suitable. And the lady said that Coco is extremely well trained already, a delightful and intelligent dog and absolutely suitable for assistance dog work. And that even though it would normally take a year for her to pass her test, if we wanted her to, she reckons she could have passed it by September and be fully qualified. I'm not sure whether we're going to do that, but that's just really lovely news as an owner. Having done all of Coco's training and her being my first dog, it's just really reassuring to feel like I've gotten it right. So now what I'm going to do is make the owl shape. I've made like a flat uh, uh, shapes. Oval. It's an oval. I've made an oval. Now, I don't have the fancy Fimo cutters because uh, this can all get quite expensive if you get carried away. So instead, what I'm going to be using is, uh, actually, let's play a game. What do you think these are? Just show you. What do you think these are? Because that's what I'm going to be using to do this cutting here. So I'm just going to cut. And also, guys, don't worry. If, because I'm completely distracted chatting to you, this does not turn out so well, I will make another one for my prize. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit out of the top of there. Now we've got that shape, which is a little bit more owl-like, and then I'm just gonna make it a little bit more. Icing, icing peppers? Yes, they are the, the they are the, um, the thing that you put in an icing bag when you ice, because about <laughs> when uh, Wonder Girl was a baby and I spent time on a mother and baby psychiatric ward because of my uh, autism, which I didn't know about, and the challenges of that, I got ridiculously into baking, like really into baking. Like I was baking, once I came home, two or three baked goods per day because it was helping me to manage my anxiety. And uh, at that time, somebody hired me for free. I didn't charge them because I didn't want to make money. Um, to make, I think it was 70 or 80 cupcakes for someone's wedding. Someone was having like a tea party wedding and I made cupcakes properly iced with the swirl and decorated. They bought all the decorations and all the goodies and stuff. It was really fun. So I have still, I haven't, I don't really do this anymore because I'm, um, lactose intolerant and I haven't really quite figured out how to make buttercream without butter. If anyone has any tips on that, do let me know. But at the time, I used those quite a lot. But now I don't have any icing bags. I've just got the tips left. And they come in quite handy for cutting circles out of my Fimo. I discovered when I was watching a Fimo tutorial and did not have the proper cutters. Yep. Now, when are you going to do the drawer? 
when I'm going to do the draw, tomorrow morning, I'm going to do it. I, 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 would, I would do it live, but I think I've got to extract because some of you might want to join in the main. When you've seen how astoundingly beautiful my necklace is, some of you might want to join. And so it would only be fair for me to do this, do the draw in the morning with the names of people that are in the club by the end of today, I guess. Yeah, that seems fair, doesn't it? So now I have made my owl shape. A lot of Fimo, it's not probably not the most interesting thing to watch people do. A lot of Fimo is stroking. You have to very gently stroke to smooth it because if you do it, if you handle it too roughly, it doesn't it doesn't come out very well. I've been doing Fimo. I got into Fimo when I was um, two years ago now. Gosh, is it really been two years? Uh, some of you who have been following my channel for longer than that will remember I ended up being um, bed bound for a little while, for maybe a month and then house bound for maybe three months. And um, during that time, a friend of mine offered to come to my house and do FEMO with me. And I was like, what is FEMO? Sure, okay. And she came around and sat with me in bed and we, and we made FEMO. She bought FEMO for me and she left me with some, some blocks of FEMO that she bought me. For me and we made Fimo and it was something that I could do in bed that made me feel less hideous because to be honest with you being in bed is quite unpleasant when you're stuck there and you can't like at the time I literally couldn't walk to the bathroom at certain points I had to roll out of bed to get people to change the bed and it was a, a very unpleasant so it gave me a little bit of brightness during that time so now this is the owl shape and now I need to make some uh, Wings or eyes? Wings. I think I'm going to make the wings next. Or am I going to make the eyes? I think I'm going to make the eyes next. Yeah, so now I'm going to make some eyes. Yeah. Uh, Ashley's asking, when you were out walking the country, I bet she didn't take you to a lot of vulnerable and more secure in your place. Yes, she absolutely does. When I'm out walking with Coco, wherever I take her with me, she just makes me feel grounded and calm and safe which is why I wanted her to be able to go to more places with me and in order for that to happen she has to be trained to the standard of an assistance dog so this is really exciting news um she has a little jacket to wear there's a picture on the community tab of her in her little jacket and she looks adorable she is very cute in her jacket right so now I'm going to use white Fimo to make eyes so this so I'll just answer another question and then I'll tell you what's going to happen next with Coco about the females, how do you stick them together? How do you stick them together? Uh, well, you're about to find out because I'm going to do that, but I could do with some whites because what hadn't, what hadn't occurred to me is that when you move from one colour to another, it's quite easy to transfer the colour to the colour that you're working with. So I normally am getting up and down and washing my hands and I can't do that. We haven't got any, I don't think. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to wipe... I'm just going to... I think we might. I think somebody's getting me some. <laughs> the team tab are getting me some wipes. So uh, team purple, I should say. So uh, where was I with with Coco? Yeah. So basically, the trainer is lovely, which really helps because I've got to work with her. Her name is Claire, and she's working for an organisation called Pausable, which is who I'm doing the scheme through. And if you want to know more real specifics about this, there is a video on my channel called Dogs for Autism, and that is all about the process that we're going through and about getting an assistance dog. But basically, it's an organisation called Pausable, and this lady, Claire, is really lovely, really supportive, and really complimentary about Coco, which makes me love her. And uh, so now she's got a little jacket uh, that says assistance dog in, in, in training, and she'll also have a lead uh, sleeve that says that, and I can basically take her wherever I go now because of the equality law, which... Uh, the equality law says that people with disabilities should be able to have reasonable adjustments made that mean that they can access the world in the same way as everybody else. And COCO means that I can access the world in the same way as everybody else. So uh, it would be illegal for a service provider to deny me access with COCO unless they had a good reason, like they're allergic to dogs, for example. So she should be able to go with me wherever I go, which I'm very excited about. Do we have any more questions? Do you have one, Wonder Girl? Yeah, I do. Oh, I have yellow. Is this stuff that you use for work? Ah, I have yellow electrician hand wipes. That'll be fine. Okay, so now I can work without transferring purple to white. Love it. Oh, why, thank you. 
Everyone say, hey, Wonder Girl. <laughs> Wonder Girl actually has her own YouTube channel. She does. Right, so now I'm going to make some eyes. I'm not actually going to use this, though, because it's got purple on it. I'm just going to put that to one side and start with some fresh white. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, Beth is saying she would really like a dog, but her husband doesn't like them. Ah, ah Beth, <laughs> interesting question, because as it happens, Mr. Purple was not initially keen on us getting a dog. He doesn't, it's not that he doesn't like dogs, which is probably a better starting point. It's just that a dog is a massive commitment, and he felt, probably quite reasonably, that since we already have three children all of whom have additional needs and myself with additional needs and a physical disability and quite a hectic life that perhaps we didn't need any extra work in our lives. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah. So he wasn't particularly keen on getting a dog. Uh, so I tried to accept that. I really did because I feel like if you're in a, ma in a marriage or a relationship or a partnership or whatever, you have to make accommodations for each other and not do things that the other person really, really doesn't want. But I have wanted a dog for my entire life and I genuinely, after about a month of trying to ponder how he felt about that, could not sit comfortably with the idea of never being a dog owner. So we had lots of discussions about the type of dog that I would get if I did get a dog and how that would work. And I'm trying to think, how did you actually come around? Oh yes, I remember now. So we made a deal. Deals are good in, in, in relationships. We made a deal. Mr. Purple, in a former life, prior to doing what he does now, uh, used to own a tropical fish shop because he has a real passion for keeping tropical fish and he actually had a shop where he sold them for, for quite a while. And he hasn't had a fish tank of his own for, he, gosh, 15 years, 20 years. Um, so the deal was, in the end, that if I got a dog he would get a fish tank so that's how we that's how we settled it isn't it and i would say that now although mr purple still wouldn't choose to have a dog i think he can see how beneficial my uh my dog is and therefore i think i think you're okay with the situation i think he i think he gets how important it is for me and because he's a lovely wonderful man he wants to have me be comfortable and happy and he can see that Coco facilitates that and so he supports us having her. Not only does he support us having her, but he also helps me to care for her, which I think oh, round of applause for Mr. Purple. Also the kids. And the kids, yeah, obviously. I also kind of slightly sold it by that. Be good for the kids. Yeah. Everybody trying? Yep. Marie is saying, if I had to cope with waiting for someone to answer her email when it's weekend and they won't answer until Monday, <laughs> she wants answers immediately. Don't we all? Could you not just drop everything and see to my needs right now? Um, I think you, the art of patience is a challenge. I'm not sure I could say that I've actually mastered the art of patience. I am not a hugely patient person. I am a little bit like, I've had an idea and now it needs to happen right now. Um, but distraction, you need to distract, you need to send that email, you need to think, right, I'm not going to hear about that till Monday, and I'm going to distract myself by doing other things, and these are the things that I'm going to do while I wait. I hope that's good advice, that's what I would do. I would do some FEMO, I would make some FEMO, oh, thank you, Beth. Is that for, is that for Mr. Purple? What are you going to spend it on, Mr. Purple? Mr. Purple's got quite into the whole microbrewery thing, haven't you, since we've been in lockdown? Right. I'm trying to decide how big these eyes should be. Because it needs to have big eyes to be really cute, doesn't it? Fish food. Someone said fish food. Oh yeah, fish, is that you? <laughs> I've just got the, uh, the, the camera, in, uh, the phone in front of me. With, I, can, I can't see as well as I can ordinarily what you're typing, so I'm ever so sorry if I'm not being as observant of your comments as normal but that's where Mr Purple comes in being a moderator so I've made two little eyes that I'm going to squash down and stick on my owl face and then after I've done that I'm going to tell you about the thing I wanted to tell you about um a support alpaca <laughs> I want a support alpaca what about a support sloth I hear they're quite laid back <laughs> 
straight eyes I need to make sure they're circular I do have to kind of concentrate a little bit but I don't want to bore you so I'm just going to take a second to make sure that these eyes are in fact circular dun, 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 dun. I should stop singing that annoying I think at some point or another I've heard that is that the wait music for something or it's got stuck in my head do you guys get tunes stuck in your head Okay, yes, we have eyes. Oh, before I actually put the eyes on, though, I've just realised I'm supposed to do a thing. I'm supposed to do a thing. This is my uh, bumping tool. <laughs> I'm going to give them official names. This is a Fimo bumper. This is Everybody knows that. That's what everyone calls it. I'm going to make the owl a little bit bumpy, just give it a little bit of texture. Who was the last time you did some movie impression of the Fimo bumper? Uh, was that Gary, by any chance? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, I have no idea, Gary, to be honest with you. Somebody's at the door. Uh, I have no idea whether the autism show is going to be cancelled, but I am supposed to be speaking at it. It's been rescheduled, as it stands, to, um, to December, when it was supposed to be in June, I think, and it's been rescheduled to December, and I am speaking on the Saturday at the NEC. I'm doing a talk about autism and bereavement because I think we don't talk about it often enough and it's a useful topic and then I'm also part of an autistic youtubers panel I think with Dan from the ASCII world and Connor Ward that's what's happening at the moment so as it stands it is supposed to be going ahead but obviously at the moment nothing is certain so we will just have to wait and see on that one why did I start my channel? Uh, I started to talk about autism on the internet because I had a lot of really challenging experiences and as an undiagnosed autistic woman throughout my life and I had a deep-seated need to try and help other people not go through those experiences if I could possibly help in any way and I am a chatterbox and naturally a performer. I was a circus artist and a dancer in my former life so for me, the most instinctive way to do that was to be public speaking and on YouTube and putting out content so that people would have access to the kind of content that I would have liked when I was struggling with what was going on with me. So now I'm going to put the eyes, I've made it bumpy, bumpy owl, bumpiness. So now I'm going to put the eyes on. So whoever was asking about how you stick it on, basically the simple answer to that question is you just stick it on. You just put it on and press it down and then you can kind of if you want so I want the I don't want the eyes to be completely blended in with the body because they should stand out but if you wanted to blend it in then you would kind of go around the sides and smudge it in now before I move on to the next stage of my owl I want to tell you about this uh, book that I've been reading so I was sent this book this is a new book it's actually coming out I've just got the press information in front of me because my working memory is not great this book is actually coming out tomorrow, so this is perfect timing for me to tell you about it. I've had it a while, but it's taken me this long to read it, but actually, telling you about it the day before it comes out, that's pretty professional, am I right? So this is a book by L. McNichol, who is a neurodivergent writer in Scotland, who now lives in London. She's from Scotland, and now she lives in London, and she has written this book. Oh, these lights are really making it hard for me to do this. It's called A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol and it is a book suitable for children aged nine and upwards. So it is a children's book but I have to say I really enjoy, we've talked about this before, but I really enjoy reading children's books and I have really really enjoyed reading this book. I would not tell you about this book if I didn't enjoy it. I would just say to the person that sent it to me, I'm ever so sorry I didn't like it. So this is the honestly how I feel about it. Truth. Uh, I really have been really quite moved by this book. This book is about a girl who is about nine or ten and she is autistic and she has an older sister who is autistic and it's about her journey of discovering about being different, what being different means, the kind of experiences that you have when you're different and ultimately how you can only really be yourself and, and, and eventually you need to find people who will accept you and love you for who you are because that's the only route to true happiness, which is just lovely. It talks about masking in this book. It talks about lots of autistic things that 
you never ever ever read about it's just a lovely book uh, the premise is that she has heard about the witch trials in her village that she lives in in Scotland and kind of really relates to that because the witches were essentially different and that's why they were judged to be witches and that's why they were tried and that really moves her and she wants to um, she wants to do something about it and that's what the premise of the book is and it's just brilliant I would definitely really recommend this book for adults and for children age nine and upwards I'm going to read it with Wonder Girl now that I've finished it it's going to be the next book that she reads so yeah that is A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol so you did get a book of the week and yeah I loved it I really loved it right back to my owl so my owl now has eyes it has eyes and now I need to give it some center to the eyes I need some darker purple I think what does that mean maybe some lighter purple yeah I'm gonna go for some lilac I've got some lilac here is this lilac I think it's lilac I should really know as a uh, as a purple loving self-declared purple loving person I should really be able to tell you what all the different shades of purple are called maybe I'll make that my next mission have you got another question uh, Catherine's asking how is the track on No Rain today so you've really got things you have to do Catherine perfect timing for the question how do I cope on low energy energy days when I've really got stuff to do on Friday I am releasing a video called low energy how to get stuff done Ta -da! <laughs> yeah so I would recommend that you watch that uh, Constance uh, was misdiagnosed uh, with some mental health things so I thought she was properly diagnosed mm -hmm. that happened to you yes I uh, so Constance is can you hear when mr. purple asks me a question or so should I repeat it back to you or are you hearing it from mr. purple if you could let me know that'd be really handy so was I misdiagnosed yes I was, I was misdiagnosed. I was misdiagnosed with cyclothymia, bipolar disorder. Somebody briefly tried to give me the diagnosis of borderline personality disorder. Depression, yeah, all of those things. I think it's very, very, very common for autistic adults who weren't the right age to be diagnosed with autism when they were younger because it wasn't really so widely recognised to end up in the mental health system and to end up with incorrect diagnoses and then the interesting part of that story is that uh, I couldn't get insurance as a result of my bipolar diagnosis being on my records so I decided I wanted to have it taken off my records since I do not have bipolar disorder and um, so in order to do that what I had to do was go and see a psychiatrist to convince the psychiatrist that I don't have bipolar disorder and it's like that situation, you know, where the more you're going, I'm not mad, I I'm totally sane. And the more you're saying that, the less sane you're sounding. I felt like I was in that kind of scenario. Yeah, so now my owl has got little, see its eyes? Can you see those? We're going to sort out, at the moment, I'm live streaming from my phone with an external mic, but at some point, I'm going to get around to getting a proper kind of webcam type setup that will hopefully be even better than my current situation but I'm hoping you're all hearing me okay and what are they saying about the questions should I be re repeat them okay I will do I will do from here on in okay I'm working with black so tell me when I stop working with this black tell me to wipe my hands because otherwise everything will be black this is coming out well though I'm, I'm quite pleased with how this is going any more questions uh, somebody's just asking you to do a video about your exercise routine I have been asked that before. I'm a little bit wary of making a video about my exercise routine because I am not a qualified exercise instructor and because what I'm doing is specific to my um, EDS, I would be nervous about other people following my exercise routine and potentially injuring themselves, especially since the reason that I can do it in such a self-directed way is that I used to be a dancer and a circus artist and therefore I have a really strong awareness of my body and space and all the things that would mean I don't get injured and if you don't have that kind of prior experience and you embark on an exercise routine without someone who really knows what they're doing and teaching it you could injure yourself and I would then feel responsible for injuring someone so I don't know would you want an, uh, just me talking about what I do and why I do it maybe would you want me to do a demonstration and tell you what to do no I don't really feel qualified to do that and I really want to be an ethical responsible youtuber who does not harm anyone I'm, I'm well I'm assuming that all youtubers would like to be that 
So I hope you can understand that. Right, I'm putting on more eye. So the eye's got basically got three different parts, four different parts. And now I'm putting on a black bit, and then I'm going to put on another white bit, and then I'll show you. Hopefully that'll really make it pop. Did I really just say that? Gosh, I sounded like an American YouTuber. That'll just really make it pop. Sorry about that. Please excuse my enthusiasm. Okay. Oh, these smell really nice. Is it weird that I want to smell them? Are they like lemon or something? They smell lovely. I like those. Better than baby wipes. I'm just going to... Mr. Purple's really aware of the shot and making sure you can all see everything, and I'm just not. So it's a good job that I've got him, really, isn't it? Moving that out of the way. Yes. Look, am I just moving slightly? Oh, thank you. Is that another super chat? And I missed it. What was it? Was it a sticker? Did I miss it? Wash your hands on us. Wash my hands. <laughs> Yes, thank you, thank you. I think that was Beth. Thank you, Beth. Oh, Beth, I put your stickers in the post. So I'll be with you soon. My purple people have been received. If you're new, if you've just joined the purple people, do email me, ella at purpleella.com, with which sticker you would like and your address, and I will put those in the post for you as soon as I next get to a post office. So... Owl has got eyes. Can you see that? It's got eyes. While singing happy birthday twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to do that, aren't I? I think that's when you're washing your hands to avoid um, catching coronavirus, which I'm not doing because I did wash my hands quite thoroughly before I started this process. Did you know that this is my 11th live stream that I've done during lockdown. I have done every single week since we went into lockdown. This is number 11. I can't believe you've all been here with me for 11 weeks. It's so lovely. It's such a lovely community and always seeing the same faces, which I'm really enjoying. Now, just got, now the next challenge is, can Ella get in to the Fimo? So now I'm gonna make wings out of this. Would you say that's Cerise? Cerise Fimo. Yes, that's it. I'm so excited that two people joined while we're here. I've been wanting, so, to be honest, when I um, watch, I have a favourite YouTuber. I will tell you who they are if you ask. But when I watch their live streams and they get a lot of members in their membership club during their live stream because they are like massive, much bigger than me. And they get members during their live stream and it's very exciting. So I now, now I feel all proper. I got members during my live stream like a proper YouTuber. Go me. <laughs> Probably all think I'm mad. Have we got any more? Yeah. Yes, I'm just trying to find, uh, Catherine saying, how do you manage doctor's appointments? I really struggle to interpret what they say and don't think about cashing from the full distance. Did you have any comments? Oh, I see. So Catherine's saying, how do we, how do I manage doctor's appointments and not forget what I wanted to say until I'm, ha after I'm, I'm in the appointment, which is quite a common problem, I think, for, for, um, for autistic people and for all people, probably, uh, I would say that the best way around that is really to write what you want to uh, what you want to say, what you want to ask. Write it all down on a piece of paper, and it is okay to literally get out a piece of paper and be like, "I'm here for this reason. These are the things I want to ask." And it's also okay to then hand the doctor that piece of paper and say, "Can you write down what you've told me because I might not remember when I get home." So write down your questions and then get the doctor to write down your response and then you're not going to miss anything. And it's completely okay to do that. In fact, last week I did some consultancy work for an organisation who make uh, a booklet sort of worksheet for people when they're visiting, for people with uh, learning difficulties and autism for when they're visiting doctors that was laid out very much in that way. So you could even make your own kind of template for that if you wanted to. Right. It's nice and soft now. But yeah, this is the Fimo Soft, so it's quite quite easy to work with, and hopefully I will not have sore fingers. So now I'm making wings. This is the challenging part. The challenging, challenging wings. Right, I'm gonna write. I've got some pink. Look, let's be let's be let's be blue Peter. I have got some pink Fimo, and now what I'm going to do is roll it out with my tool. Where is it? This is coming out really well. I can't believe I'm actually successfully making something while talking. I'm really not very good at multitasking, generally, to tell you the truth. So what about doctor's appointments last time? 
Doctor's appointments by phone. Oh, hideous, right? Still, make a list, have it, have it all on a piece of paper. I basically don't expect my brain to remember anything at any time. I have everything written down or on my phone when it comes to doctor's appointments, when it comes to to-do jobs, when it comes to diary entries. And actually, when we were first in lockdown, because I um, wasn't looking at my phone and my diary as much because everything was cancelled, I actually missed some online appointments when I would never, ever ordinarily miss online appointments because I'm known for being really organised because I've had to overcompensate and become really organised. So... If it's on the phone, if it's in person, it's always okay to write things down. And the other good thing about when you're on the phone is, as I said last week, you can also create yourself a little bit of a script if you're going to struggle with what to say. Right, I'm going back to my... I'm not going to use the large, very professional Fimo cutter that I have here. Instead, I'm going to use the, the small one. And I'm going to cut out circles to begin with. I think last time I did this, I had this challenge. I need a I need a pokey thing, which is the official term for this. This is officially the Fimo pokey thing. I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six. I need six. So let's start with three circles. Helping them out. Oh, he's ever so good, isn't he? Helping me out with my set. So ha has anyone asked anything, or shall I find a new topic to talk about? all very quiet maybe they're just really enjoying that there's a thing isn't there you can watch on youtube that my children have told me about where you just watch people doing things and it's supposed to soothe your brain it's called like asm or arm or what's it called asmr asmr yeah and maybe this is like asmr asmr videos would presumably be less challenging to make as well so now i'm going to use this why has that got a because i used the pokey thing that's okay i'm going to use this in fact i think I think I need it to be a bit thinner. I'm going to start that again. But we're near. This is three quarters made now, I'd say. And I'm going to stay here until it's finished. <coughs> what are they asking? I can't believe more cut out this. What is your favourite colour? What is my favourite colour? Seriously. <laughs> ah, green. <laughs> Sorry, that's mean. I shouldn't say what I don't mean because that's not very autism friendly. My favourite colour is purple. It is purple. I've always loved purple since I was a small child. Um, but I didn't used to have quite so much purple because I was encouraged by people in the world to not buy everything in purple. And then I called myself a uh, purple Ella on the internet, which gave me free licence to buy everything in purple. And in fact, I've been at conferences before now where I've gone to speak and I've not been wearing purple because it does happen and I'm not wearing purple right now. And people have come up to me and gone, uh, you're not wearing purple, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so Tony's asking, are you going to do any more collabs, collabs either with other YouTubers or even with a purple person? Um, am I going to do any more collabs? Collabs, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure that in the future I will do some collabs. I need to poke this out without getting any pokey holes in it, which is proving to be quite challenging. I um, I will probably do more collabs because collabs are fun to do, but they're also quite a lot of work because working. the reason that I work alone is that working with other people can be quite challenging. I really enjoyed working with Yo Sambi Sam and we've actually been whatsapping each other on a very regular basis since then and it's been lovely and I'd, I'd say we're developing a friendship which is delightful but it's not always easy working with other people as an autistic person and one of the reasons that I do what I do is because I can do it from home and around my um, challenges so when you start to involve working with someone else that means that you've got to also fit around their challenges and you know it's a whole thing so yes I will but depends on who asks and when and, and how and what? Yep. Uh, let's see if I see any more questions. Um, do all autistic people get thoughts stuck in their heads? Uh, do they get thoughts stuck in their heads? I think 
but all, I think the thing is, is that all autistic people are different and often when we aren't either secure in our diagnosis or thinking about whether we might be autistic, we are obviously looking for some generalisations about autistic people so that we can see whether we fit that pattern. But unfortunately, there are no all autistic people do answers and I don't think I get thoughts stuck in my head. I get songs stuck in my head, but I think that's just being human. Right, I've got four and I need six, so I'm just going to make some more circles. When is the film on you to be doing in the morning? Oh, that's a good question. I really, really want to do... I would do another video with Roz as soon as she was available because I have such an incredible relationship with that lady. She is such an easy person to be friends with. We were yesterday doing an art session. We do a weekly art session, Roz and I, on uh, FaceTime, and we did a weekly art session. We're still trying to get a podcast together. Basically, the next time she's in Bristol and we're allowed to see each other, we will probably make a video. But because she's been doing, um, she is, for those of you that don't know, she is currently studying occupational therapy at university, which is taking quite a lot out of her. It's quite an intense thing for her to be doing. So she is, when she has been to Bristol recently, has been too tired, really, to think about making videos. But I'll try and pin her down. Is there anything you'd particularly like Roz and I to talk about if she does come and is up for a video? We have a name for the podcast, so that's a start, isn't it? It is going to be called Keeping It Together with Ella and Roz, which I quite like. And I'm quite excited about the idea of doing podcasts, so I think we're quite excited about that. We've both got mics now, so that's uh, like USB mics, so that's something, isn't it? Now I'm going to put the wings on. Uh -huh. How would you feel about doing a collab with Jessica Taylor? I would absolutely love to do a collab with Jessica. Jessica is uh, a real hero of mine. And, oh, do we have another member? Hey, Karina, welcome to the Purple People. Yay! <laughs> the joy um, I have to start that again because I made them too thick um, I really admire Jessica and I watch her videos I do subscribe to her channel I watch her videos I follow her on Instagram I think she's brilliant I think that what she does for the disability community is fantastic and I wish her every success and I would absolutely love to do a collaboration with her however I'm not sure whether I might be out of her league I don't know what do you think Maybe if enough of you went over there and were like, hey, you should do a collaboration with Ella, she might be up for that. But I know that at the moment she is injured. So those of you that follow her might know that she's hurt her back and isn't making anything at the moment. So maybe in the future, when I amass thousands of subscribers, which, you know, could happen. I, some of you might have noticed that I did hit 7,000 subscribers a couple of weeks ago, and now I'm at like 7,200. So, you know, that's only... 80,000 less than her. <laughs> yeah, so yes. Yes, I would love to, but that would really be up to her. Oh, thank you. You guys are so lovely. I have to say that. One of the things that's been beautiful to come out of lockdown, I've been making these videos for a long time, as you know, and uh, didn't start live streaming until a couple of months before lockdown happened. And I feel like through lockdown... I have really had a chance to get to know who my community are, who you are, what you want, what you enjoy. Do we have another? Hey, Mel, welcome to the Purple People. This is too exciting. I'm getting very excited now. You, do you want my geeky dance? You wouldn't believe that I used to be a dancer, would you? <laughs> Look at that smile. Thank you. Thank you so much. As I was saying, you are such a lovely community. And the Purple People is turning into a very <laughs> lovely community. Everyone that's in the Purple People is really supportive. I mean, not just the people that are in the Purple People. All of you are really supportive, lovely people who make me feel like what I do is valued, a value to you. And it's definitely a value to me. And I just think it's a beautiful thing have had this time to be at home and so therefore had the time and the energy to connect with you in this way and get to know who my community is so that moving forwards I can really be making the kind of content that you want and is useful to you and I think that's fantastic I really that really makes me happy it makes me happy I'm so happy I'm gonna be buzzing after this live stream I'm just gonna be like oh my goodness loads of people joined the purple people 
<gasps> right, wings, take two. Take two, it takes two, baby. Right, I need, I need six wings, that's where mm. I was, wasn't it? There's a shop in uh, Scotland that recommends them called the Scottish, Sp Scottish Autism One Spot Shop. I think, yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a lot of, I think that's the th weird thing about me. I think outside of the YouTube world, I have been recommended quite widely. I'm used by, I know that my videos are used by counts. That's the thing as well in terms of subscribers. I know that my videos are used quite a lot by councils and training providers in their training resources. But they don't necessarily subscribe. They kind of bookmark individual videos that are useful to them to use to, for training. And that's absolutely fantastic. Um, but it's meant that I guess I haven't felt like I've had that community as strongly until I started doing these live streams and, and getting to know you a little bit more. Putting, putting names to faces isn't the right word because obviously I don't know what any of you look like, but seeing the regular names that are here week after week and getting to know what your, what's going on in your lives and your challenges and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so... I'm just going to blend these in and then I'll show you and then there's just one more thing to do. So if you have a question that's burning in your soul to ask me, then now would be a good time to do so. So yeah, do you know what? This is just perfect because I've had such a stressful week and now happy things have happened and I'm feeling happier and maybe I will be an easier person to be around for the Purple family tomorrow and they will all be very happy about that, won't you? Is anybody watching um, Killing Eve? I'm not doing TV show of the week, but I did want to mention Killing Eve because I am very much enjoying the new series. Right, now I've put the wings on. I have one more thing to do before I show you the wings, and then there's one more job after that. Just going to put some little... I think I'm going to use this tool. I'm going to dot the wings <laughs> so that they look pretty. What are you gigging about? Um, Rose is asking, would you consider having a post office box? So that people could send you letters and presents. I had thought about that, the P.O. box thing. That's a proper YouTuber thing to do, isn't it? Do you think I'm going to be here even when I have got, you know, whatever, whatever I need to get to before I decide I'm a proper YouTuber? I'm going to be going, oh, that's what proper YouTubers do. Uh, possibly. I'm not really sure how it works. Does anybody know how you get one? It would be fun. I watched... What's buzzing? Oh, is it your phone? I watched Jessica, uh, Jessica does uh, Vlogmas, which is where you do a video every day for 12 days over Christmas, which, oh my goodness, I think I would be in a heap on the floor if I tried to do that, to be frank. Um, and she did a thing where she opened letters and cards and stuff from her subscribers that they'd sent to her PO box, and it was very fun. It did look like fun. And who doesn't like getting things to the post, right? But I'd never want anyone to feel under, like, pressure to do anything like that. Dot, dot, dot. I'm nearly there. I will be talking again in a second. But it's quite hard to do <laughs> crafting whilst talking. For the purple people next month, I'm going to try and make a video where I talk to you about something probably autism-related whilst making some kind of baked good. And that could be quite amusing. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. So now it has wings. Can you actually see that? Can you see that properly? It has wings. And the last two last little touches are. I'm gonna put a little bow on it. Where's my pink? There it is. And I'm gonna put a loop of wire in there so that after I have baked it, which I will be doing. Oh, I need to. You didn't tell me to wash my hands. It's okay. Yeah, I won't be long. Um, yeah, after I've done that, then I'm going to bake it once I've left you guys, and then I'm going to varnish it, and I have got in my total roll bag some, where are they? Oh, could you find the necklaces out of there so I can show them? I'm asking him to multitask now. So now I'm going to make a little pink bow to put on. Is anyone feeling like they might go away and do some polymer clay? Polymer clay joy. Bye Mel. Um, okay. Let's 
going to be good. Right. The uh, no, the necklaces, just so I can show them. What, they're sort of, yeah, that's fine. So I can show them what I'm going to put it on. Pile in with clay. If you do want to do pile in with clay, I would recommend a really good starting point being like a basic Fimo kit with a few tools and a few colours and also varnish. Varnish is really important because when you varnish it, it suddenly looks a million times better. And then going onto YouTube, and if you're into kawaii like me, there's absolutely loads of kawaii polymer clay tutorials. You can make little charms and necklaces and things like that. Magnets are quite a good one. We've got all the kit for making all that kind of stuff. And um, there's also lots of tutorials that aren't kawaii, but why would you want to make things that aren't kawaii? I mean, I don't know. My bow shape. Gonna roll this out. Looking good. This is an extra long live stream. Sorry about that, guys. Hope you're okay with that. But I'm nearly there. Were there any more questions while I was? This is gonna be so cute. I'm very happy with this. Very happy. I can't believe I've actually successfully made. I've successfully made something that looks good on the internet whilst talking and getting excited. Even though it's Wise Japanese food. Yes, I did. And I, I also know that I'm probably not saying it right either. My kids do tease me about the fact that I can't... I'm really... Like, my whole sort of thing is the kawaii thing, but I can't actually say it properly. So they do tease me for that. It's a little bit thick. So how will we know... The thing that I've been wondering... Some of you might have seen me tweet this is how will we know when lockdown is no longer lockdown? Because things are changing, but we're still in lockdown. And I'm a bit confused by that. Like the lockdown is looking less lockdown-y, but maybe we'll know, yeah, cool, thank you. Maybe we'll know we're in lockdown when I stop doing lockdown live streams. But that's a good thing. So next week's lockdown live stream, is there anything that you would particularly like me to do in next week's lockdown live stream? That's a good question, isn't it? I could make something, I could bake something, I could do something like would you rather, where you all send me would you rather questions and I answer those. Which side should I put it on? Does that look okay, do you think? Does that look okay or is it too light? Okay, I'm just going to get this stuck on here and then I'm going to put the loop in and then it's finished. Before I stick that on there, these are my necklaces. So I'll be using one of these to put it on to send to my lucky winner. Who I will be notifying tomorrow in the Purple People community. So in, in the, on the community tab, I do stuff that's just generally for everyone. And then I also do um, specific posts on a Monday every Monday for the purple people so that we can have a chat about what's going on and then also sporadically for the purple people like tomorrow's announcement now the last finishing touch is this is craft wire craft wire is very useful for making Fimo things so I'm going to cut a little bit of craft wire and then make a loop no actually that's not quite enough it needs to be a bit longer than that I have two different thicknesses of craft wire, so depending on what I'm working with. I'm going to make a loop with this. Ah, the sigh, the sigh. I'm going to bend, bend the wire gently down the stream. Ow, I've literally just stuck wire into my finger. Don't do that at home, kids. That's painful. So then what I'm going to do, when I first started making Fimo things and sticking these kinds of loops in, the loops always came out once it was baked, and then I learnt this technique where you just stick it in in a way that means it doesn't do that, basically, which I'm not going to explain because this is not really, let's face it, is it? A Fimo craft tutorial. 
it's just me rambling on whilst making something out of Fimo. But I think I've really enjoyed this. I hope that you have too. Okay, I think it is finished. Can you see that? Is that a good shot? Can you guys see that? Can you just turn down the light a little bit so I can show them? That'll help. My little kawaii owl. So I'm going to bake that. I'm going to varnish that. I'm going to put it on a necklace. And I am going to tomorrow randomly select a winner from the Purple People. Thank you for joining new Purple People members. You will be in with a chance of winning too. It's been a, a really fun live stream for me. I hope you've enjoyed it too. As I've said, tomorrow's video will be, not tomorrow, Friday. Friday's video will be low energy, how to get stuff done. Um, and then next week I will be back on Wednesday for my usual weekly live stream. If you guys or people watching this after it is no longer live have any ideas for what you would like me to do in next week's live stream, let me know ASAP because I've been trying to schedule them by like Friday for the next week because you know proper YouTuber stuff. So let me know in the comment box below. Don't forget to like the stream uh, so that YouTube's got somebody called Al Gore who really likes rhythm and he's on YouTube and he likes it when you like things so if you could do that that would be much appreciated. Thanks for your super chats, thanks for joining the purple people, have a good evening and that's me for now. Bye bye!